weekend. I don't know which day this video is going up, but it's actually New Year's Day today. And I'm here with my mom. And we just came over to Einstein because I love Einstein coffee. And my mom wanted to, to get one. So yeah, New Year's Day. I just applied the uh, Claire SPF 40 tinted mineral sunscreen. This has been, I've been using this since I finished up my Color Science Mineral Face Shield. And I really like this a lot. It is um, SPF 40 as opposed to that one. I believe it was SPF 50. I can't remember off the top of my head. Like that one, it is a mineral only sunscreen. Like that one, it is water resistant. And uh, like that one, it uh, is tinted. So you get uh, the active ingredient zinc oxide and the inactive ingredient iron oxide will protect you against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So those are important if you suffer from hyperpigmentation, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And this is great because it has zinc in it, which will give you UVB protection as well as good UVA protection. If you're looking at sunscreen active ingredients and you're trying to deduce what it is that's protecting you against what, uh, if you're here in the States, if you're, if you're in the US, this is specific to you, I'm not gonna go into detail about those sunscreens in other countries because the filters are more complex. Um, but for here in the States, if you're trying to figure out what ingredient is what, zinc oxide will cover UVB and UVA very well. And the bigger the zinc oxide, the better it gets into UVA. And the way to know the size is more or less how casty it is, unfortunately. So those that make a nice white paste, those offer the best protection, but nobody wants to support that. Um, so zinc is what gives great broad spectrum coverage. And also avabenzone is what will give you protection against UVA1 and UVA2, the two parts of UVA that we need to protect our skin from. Those are the only ingredients really in our sunscreens that will cover uh, UVA. And so if you're ever wondering, uh, you know, does this have adequate UVA protection? Those are the things that are gonna, gonna yield that. Unfortunately, avabenzone is not super stable. Avabenzone is a chemical filter, so sunscreens that leave no cast, they're likely uh, exclusively, you know, a chemical sunscreen won't leave a cast, but it'll tend to burn and sting more and be more uncomfortable. And the ingredient in our chemical sunscreens is gonna give protection against uh, UVA um, is going to be avabenzone. Like I said, it's not super stable. So, and when it when it absorbs the UVA and 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 UV, it uh, you know it it degrades. Now, manufacturers can do things to help stabilize it, and the companies that do that and do it well are L'Oreal, uh, you know, La Roche Posay sunscreens, Neutrogena sunscreens. They are able to stabilize the you, the avabenzone, um, but you know some you know other com it's not a requirement that they do that. Uh, so you know I have a lot of confidence in those those sunscreens because they put a lot of R and D into into the filters. L'Oreal actually pioneered and developed another broad spectrum UVA uh, filter that unfortunately is not present in very many sunscreens here. It is. Um, Oh dear, I'm blanking. Mexorel. <laughs> uh, it's Mexorel. Mexorel is actually FDA approved, but L'Oreal owns it. They created, you know, they created it. Um, and the FDA, while it's approved here, they make L'Oreal go through a lot of hoops to put it into sunscreens. But that filter is another one that offers protection against UVA1 and UVA2 really well. And unlike avabenzone, it's stable, but you won't find it in very many sunscreens. So really our best bet at the end of the day for good protection against uh, UVA and UVB is going to be zinc uh, or a high SPF chemical sunscreen with avabenzone. Why do I say high SPF? The higher the SPF, the more filters are going to be present. And so the greater UVA protection you, you will likely get. That's actually been shown clinically that higher SPF sunscreens in a sense are a lot better because higher SPF chemical sunscreens are a lot better because A, they have more filters. So they give 
the they give the wearer more UVA protection and B because of the way people put sunscreen on they don't put enough on so if they put a high high SPF sunscreen on the way most people do they'll at least get a reasonable SPF on so if you choose a sunscreen that's SPF 100 um, that uh, judging by how people put sunscreen on you actually will get a decent decent amount of protection from that whereas if you're using 30 and you're applying it like most people do you're probably not getting enough SPF all over uh, to really get you good protection so yeah at the end of the day I love this sunscreen it uh, it's a good one it's um, you know got good good uh, a good set of ingredients for not only protection against UV, UVB, all, all sunscreens do, UVB are the rays that burn. Uh, that's what SPF means, basically. How well is this going to protect you from a burn? Uh, but it also has good stuff for UVA, the stuff that is like the silent killer of skin. UVA is what penetrates really deeply and destroys our collagen. And then third, it also has good protection against pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So visible light is not the same as ultraviolet ra ultraviolet radiation. It is what you know what we see with our eyes. We don't see UV. We see visible light. And visible light in the blue wavelengths has been shown to drive hyperpigmentation in darker skin types specifically. So if you are a darker skin type, your skin, um, you know, if you get acne, for example, and it heals with hyperpigmentation, you get you get a bug bite and it heals with hyperpigmentation, really what you need to do to protect and prevent, help reduce the risk of that happening is to use a... Um, is to use a sunscreen that has either zinc, large particle zinc, and or iron oxides, an inactive ingredient. In other words, a tinted sunscreen. So this is a good, great choice for that. This or the Color Science Mineral Shield, great choices. Um, the CeraVe Hydrating SPF that I mentioned yesterday and I reviewed for you guys, that is also a good choice. It's a lower SPF, so it's SPF 30. So the way most people apply it, you're not going to get, you're not going to get a super high SPF all over. But if you do it, if you do it well and you put a lot on, that actually, you know, it's a good, it's good enough. Uh, it's, it's good enough, but you have to do it, you have to do it right. You have to put it all over to every single surface and in a sufficient density, which most people don't do. So I like that one uh, because of the way it looks on the skin, it, you know, goes on pretty well, although it is a little on the orangey side. Uh, but that one, not only is it SPF 30, which is a little bit lower, but it's not water resistant. And um, water resistance is nice because, uh, you know, it, it resists a little bit of the day to, you know, your regular day to day perspiration. Uh, it'll hold up a little bit better under that. You still have to reapply it, it still wears off. Uh, you still have to reapply it at least three times a day um, you know, or every two hours while you're outdoors. But uh, it holds up less well under sweat and humidity. So if you're trying to compare sunscreens as far as like what's a better value, and you see that one sunscreen is so much cheaper, you know, ask yourself a few things. Like what is the SPF um, of one versus the other? If the other is a lot higher, then, you know, that's the price difference right there. Or if the other sunscreen is water resistant, uh, you know, that 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 goes into the price. Um, the higher the SPF, the more filters they put in, the more costly it is to make, presumably. And then if they do, if it's, if it's, if it's water resistant, they have to do another round of testing to show that. So it's more, it's more of a cost to the manufacturer. So if you're comparing two different sunscreens, you wanna know what's a better value, uh, take those things into account, that matters. Um, anyways, I just imported some of the footage from this morning and was editing it and I caught myself in something that I want to clarify for you guys because I'm sure I'll get a comment about this. I mentioned earlier this morning that if you're looking to determine what's a better value in your sunscreens, if something's a really high SPF as opposed to another, uh, you know, that kind of justifies the price point. You may, may be saying, whoa, 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 wait. Two years ago in your sunscreen Q&A series, you said that higher SPF was mostly a marketing gimmick, that above a certain SPF, it really didn't make much of a difference. I have changed my tune on that quite a bit in that we now have some evidence in favor of higher SPFs being a better value for patients because, um, all right, here, here, here's to clarify. Uh, you know, above SPF 50, as far as the sunscreen's ab ability to protect against a burn, 
you're splitting hairs. You're really splitting hairs. But the devil's in the details with that. The ability of a sunscreen to protect someone from a burn in laboratory settings. So when they're, when they're applying the sunscreen onto the backs of test subjects to determine the SPF, there's not gonna be a huge difference between SPF 50 or 70 or 90, really splitting hairs. But in real life, real world usage, the way people actually put sunscreen on, we now know that people don't put it on like they do like they do in the lab when they're figuring out, when they're determining SPF. When, when, when SPF is determined, it's de determined on actual people, but somebody's putting it on their back at a certain density and a certain location. And in that test situation, there's no difference between these high, high SPFs. And so it's like, why waste your money on that? But in real world use, we now, we now know that the way people put sunscreen on is not how it's put on in the, te in, in the test. We're not doing it that way. We're doing we're, we're way underhanded, and so we're not we're we're undershooting an application. So if you go in with a much higher SPF and you apply as most consumers do, you're better off because you're at least getting getting to to a ballpark of reasonable SPF. So it does actually matter. So I'm changing my tune on that. I want to be clear as to why it's a little different than what I used to say in my my earlier Q and A's. Um, so yeah, I hope all that verbiage was helpful to you. Um, my mom's like, I really need coffee, shut up. No, that's <laughs> alright, the verbiage is good. And do you guys remember when I bought these socks to go ice skating in San Diego? They match my little hoodie has a similar t uh, color pocket. Let's play Skeeter's Mesquite Grill. Comment below on if you've ever eaten at Skeeter's, those of you who live in Texas. I don't know if it's just a Houston thing or if it's a... Texas. I don't know why. I know it's to like Tex Max, but I hear they have a little breakfast buffet. Here's Einstein. Um, I used to work in, I uh, not work at Einstein's, but I used to bring my computer to Einstein's many years ago and sit and drink coffee and work. Hash brown bundle. They have lots of bagels. They have little doggy bagels. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite coffee there, vanilla hazelnut. I used to drink an ungodly volume of that many years ago. Hey, rocking your sweater. Hey, buddy. Rocking your sweater. We missed you. Downward dog. Down we missed you. Dog. Yeah. Well, as much as I was ooing and aahing about the uh, Einstein hazelnut, that was awful. <laughs> Yeah. We will not be going back there again. My coffee tasted like it had been sitting in that canister for too, too long. It was kind of sour. And you got an and almond milk latte. latte was all almond milk. 99.9% .9 almond milk and um, the rest coffee. Yeah, that's the yeah. last time I get an inspiration. Well, we thought, we thought we would shake it up for you guys a little bit. And that's about... That's the end of that. It's not as creative as we get at Whole Foods next week. <laughs> Ivy, what are you watching here? This is a cute little Come on, whatever. Oh, Aww. you want to give me a hug? You want to give me a hug? Little boy, little boy, little boy, full of joy. Aww. Give her a hug. Aww. Hey, everybody. Is she your favorite human, Tabby Bo? <laughs> Aww. His ears. Rectifying the coffee situation stat with a poor Siggy lion's mane. Gotten spoiled by these, they're so good. Uh, maybe that's why the Einstein was a disappointment. Although I recently had Einstein, I think in an airport and it was just as good. I think that was just a bad, it had been just sitting out for a long time, that particular hazelnut. Yeah, I don't think that the, uh, because the coffee that they put in my latte was, was non-existent. Yeah. I, um, I just got a new coffee from that trade coffee. That's really good. I forget the brand, yeah. the company. I've been happy with that trade 
uh, coffee. It's like a subscription service where you get different uh, coffees from different roasters and uh, they kind of help you choose one based on what what your taste profile is like. You take like a little quiz and uh, not only that but uh, like how you drink your coffee if you do like I do uh, stovetop uh, Bialetti or uh, a French press or if you like more cold brew I guess or drip they can kind of help you pick pick a coffee that'll go well with that. You can do whole beans or ground. So yeah, roasters from all over the country. It's just kind of nice to get more specialty coffees. I've really been happy with it. Um, so, and I also love the Four Sigmatic coffee, the whole the um, ground coffee. You know, the instant packets are nice when you're in a pinch, but the ground coffee is also pretty good. Comes out pretty well on the French press. It's a coarse enough grind that it does okay in the French press. I've never actually made it like in a filter setup. I've never cared to use those. I don't like having the coffee with the filter. Um, I, just, I don't know, like a Mr. Coffee Pot. So yeah, um, but my cute little Alfred French press, just like disintegrated. The um, apparatus on the top just kind of fell apart. So my mom, speaking of Mr. Coffee, my mom has a French press that she never uses. So I'll be, she said I could take this um, to replace my Alfred French press. Yes, and there's some uh, French grind coffee you should take too because I'm not going to use that. Yeah, this part just completely came apart and it was like the little um, screw was kind of stripped somehow, so I kept well, the got a lot of wear and tear. I kept the uh, carafe part. I just tossed the topper, but I kept the carafe part to water plants with, so it won't go to waste. But yeah, that was a shame. But I want to have a backup here. Don't want to be without coffee. That is dangerous. Dangerous. Ooh, QVC has some little light up trees. Yeah, they've got like a Christmas, Ooh, they're having a Christmas uh, markdown. Thing Christmas going on. Uh, discount. QVC will rope me in. I mean, I can be swayed on QVC. They're very persuasive. Look away. Look away. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. <laughs> Otherwise, before you know it, I'll be buying a bunch of Christmas decorations I don't need. I don't need to store all year. Oh, those are cute. Tybee goes. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, giving me this throne. You're something. You didn't want to go out for your walkabout, so I I, I didn't push it. It's too cold I'm out. I want to be a snuggle bunny. I want to be a snuggle bunny. It's too cold out. So, I've spent New Year's Day getting moved into my new planner. So, you'll recall a few vlogs back, we went to that store, Dirt Cheap, where everything is, as the name implies, Dirt Cheap. I need to go back there now the holidays are over and see if I can't get some more deals. Anyways, I got this uh, Day Designer A5 Ring Bound Planner. And the reason is that I really want to switch back into a ring bound system. I've been using the Erin Condren coiled planner, life planner for two years now, and I love it. But one thing I don't care about the ring bound system or the bound systems is that you're restricted by whatever they mold they have you in, and they're not customizable. But a few years ago, I had an A5 ring bound planner and I loved doing it because I would kind of make my own inserts. Anyways, long story short, I bought this day designer, uh, dirt cheap, and as the name implies, it was really inexpensive and it's nice. I mostly just wanted it for the binder itself. The inserts though were pretty nice, but started in 2019, we're now in 2020. So I bought these inserts from YesStyle. They're by um, Mina's house. And I've just been moving in uh, to the planner and I just wrote out the numbers by hand. And here at the top, you can circle the month. 
yeah, so I went ahead and wrote out all the days of the month. That's the month at a glance. And then the week at a the weekly spread I like as well. It's pretty simple. It's just, uh, you know, here you have a nice blank space for writing stuff. And then, you know, a lot of open space to just do as you so choose. All right, but for those of you who are into planners, I got my mom this for Christmas. And now that she's been using it, I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna get one. It's a Polaroid Zip mobile photo printer. She's just storing it in the box here. It's awesome because it will print photos on this special Zip printer paper that is a sticker. And it requires no ink cartridge. It's the way the paper is set up. And so you can just sync it with your phone and print pictures from your phone. And they come out really nice. Um, and you've been happy with it, right? It's very easy to operate. I mean, it's like a no brainer. And look at how nice. Dr. Dre! <laughs> look yeah. how nice that is. It makes a sticker. You can so also create really nice. a um, more of a landscape one if you want. Mm -hmm. I have one other picture here of somebody else. There Aww, he is. <laughs> yeah, my From mom. Christmas. My mom yeah, made my Christmas vlog that. as a thumbnail. The thumbnail as an ornament. Isn't that cute? Yeah. So you do, you know you just uh, put it in there as a picture. But yeah, that's going to be a really nice memory. Yeah, I think I'm going to get one. I got it on Amazon. I'll link it down below for you guys, but. Product accessories. Yeah, and it's nice and tiny. Um, um, you can just. Oh, you can get a you can 20 pack, a 30 pack, or a 50 pack. Yeah, that's the paper. They're two refills. by three. It's called zinc paper. And when you buy this, it comes with paper. And tiny. Just got done with his training session with the iFetch. You know, he's pretty, getting pretty good at that. He's getting much better. He actually put his snout in here. Mm -hmm. His mouth is down in there, so I think he's almost ready to. To give it a shot. I don't know why oh, my it's mom's such a watching challenge my vlog. <laughs> yeah. Her New Year's Eve vlog. I've got to watch that one for sure because it's going to be a good one. <laughs> That's all they all are. Anyways, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. I hope you all had a lovely New Year's Day and you're having a good weekend, likely, when you see this. As I said, I'm not sure which day of the week I'm going to put it up. But uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a good day.